Hey everybody, it's Hawkeye or Hawkeye here. I'm Red King. I'm Mr. Hewitt. And this is the latest episode of Comics, Comics, Etc. Today we have a special episode for you. Unfortunately, we don't have any reviews for you, but there's been some decently interesting comic news, so we're gonna talk about it, go over our opinions, ask you about your opinions. Today we are um, basically just going to cover the big announcements from DC and Marvel, because they did have the most, you know, explosive, shocking reveals, although DC only really had one. First, we're going to talk about uh, the two new Gotham series that DC has just announced, Arkham Manor and Gotham Academy. Uh, Arkham Manor, which is going to be written by Jerry Dugan, who is uh, one of the writers of Deadpool, and drawn by Sean Crystal, who's an artist who also does Deadpool, is set to feature... Uh, the Wayne Manor becoming the new Arkham Asylum because the previous Arkham Asylum has been blown up for what is apparently the 700th time. So what are you guys' thoughts on this? What, what, are you, what are you hoping to see come out of the series? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, it seems pretty ballsy of uh, Bruce to go ahead and be like, yeah, you guys can totally put in Batman's worst enemies on top of the area where Batman operates. Like, I really can't wait to see the Joker find the Batcave and just be like, whatever, and move on. I would like to see how he'd react to that. If he came across that and, like, you know, unwillingly just kind of was just like, ooh, what's in here? Because that's, that's Joker. Mischief is his life. He would see the Batcave and his mind would just be blown. And Mischief he, managed. Yeah. <laughs> and he would, he would lose it. And I think it would be awesome to see, like, what degree he would lose it. Whether it would be, like, to the point where he would just be like, I give up crime. I'm done. I'm going to go. I'm just going to sit in a corner for the rest of eternity. Or maybe it just makes him, like, normal. Because he no longer has something to fixate and obsess on. I don't know. I mean, seeing Harvey Two Face in the bat in like in Wayne Manor would probably make him crazier. Because he already hates the Waynes. Everybody hates the Waynes. Well, everybody does. But I mean, literally, everybody hates the Waynes for everybody. all the wrong reasons. Hush. Hush. Hates the he wants to be the Waynes. <laughs> he wants to be Bruce Wayne so that he can ruin Bruce Wayne. I mean, that's my opinion. That's Anyways. what I would like to see. What would you like to see, Mr. Mr. Bees? Uh, I don't know. It seems like it's going to be an interesting run. This is just speculation, but my preface into Bruce Wayne's identity as Batman coming out to the public in New 52, it'd be interesting. I don't know how it would work. All in all, I think pretty excited about Arkham Manor. Excited oh, yeah. to see where it goes. Excited to see how it's going to go, especially given all the other Batman projects going on. I was going to tie in. Uh, anyway, on to the next one. Uh, the other new series coming out, I believe, in October, over Gotham Academy. <laughs> which is going to be written by Becky Clunin, who is a phenomenal writer and artist, and Brandon Fletcher, who's also going to be writing another title we're going to be talking about later, and uh, drawn by Carl Curl, who I'm not too familiar with his work, but from what I've seen so far, it looks pretty exciting. Uh, the premise here being that it's going to focus in on one of the prep schools in Gotham, and how they deal with being teenagers in Gotham, which I think is pretty interesting in and of itself, given that Gotham is a pretty terrible place to live. So, what do you guys think of that? Honestly, I think that sounds stupid. Of course you do. Why do I care about these preppy kids? It's a prep school, and they're talking about them surviving in Gotham. You know, the worst they have is, like, the worst case scenario is you have another Bruce Wayne, where, like, your parents get killed by a mugger. The worst case scenario is they live in Gotham, <laughs> where, where crime lords will come into your house and murder your family for have kicks. You, have you seen Metropolis? Metropolis is just bad. Not it really looks bad. <laughs> it's only bad because it has all the... Super villains, the ones that actually have powers, and they just break buildings. Yeah, yeah. They destroy yeah. places. Yeah, but they don't go into your home and murder your family. No, and they smear the blood on the walls. They collapse the building on top of clever them. messages. <laughs> Mr. Hewitt, I am the exact opposite. I think it's going to be a more humorous uh, series, but personally, I am in love with the Miss Marvel run right now, and it is just all humor with like very, very slight undertones of seriousness. Very slight. I think that this is going to be another series like that. It's going to bring a lighter side to Gotham. I think it's going to be an interesting read. It's not going to be essential if you're going to be following Batman stuff, but it's going to be fun. I'm with him on this, actually. Uh, I'm a big fan of the current Teen Wolf series on MTV, and I really like that kind of mixture of suspense drama and just general and teenage, teenage drama. It's, it's, it makes for an interesting read, and, you know, I think it'll especially be interesting because, I mean, if you consider a lot of... Uh, Batman psychics start off as young heroes, Robin, Robin, Robin. Robin. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many of these kids growing up in Gotham, growing up in these circumstances, are going to end up new vigilantes, new heroes, or at least, you know, other prominent figures. Because there's no reason for them to introduce them to us if they're not going to play some sort of role at some point. It might not be a big one, 
but they might end up having some important part of Gotham's infrastructure. And I think it's cool to see Gotham developed more than just the characters we've already seen established. Especially with especially with DC's <laughs> kick lately, they introduce us to more characters. Annie Aguilar is probably going to be a sidekick, and Julia Pennyworth is probably going to be a sidekick, and Harper Rose who's definitely going to be a sidekick. So it's just nice to see this sort of building. I mean, world building. That's all we're going to say. So yeah, uh, three out of three of us are excited for no. this. New three out of three. Three out of three excited for this new series. And now, to talk about the uh, probably the most exciting DC announcement still in the Gotham verse is the new creative team taking over Batgirl uh, in October. Uh, it's going to be written by Cameron Stewart and Brendan Fletcher again, who's also writing Gotham Academy, so there's probably going to be some overlay there. And it's going to be drawn by Babs Tar, which I think is infinitely amusing that a woman named Babs is going to be drawing Barbara Gordon. Barbara Gordon. <laughs> I'm going to start off with this one. I'm actually really, really, really excited. Um, I've only picked up the current run of Batgirl being written by Gail Simone. Every now and again, I feel like it was the same kind of stuff we were seeing from Batgirl for a while. So, But this new creative team, you know, she's got a new costume, she's moving to a new part of Gotham. They're separating her from what's the norm. Kind of like what they did with Harley Quinn, but less amusing. I don't know, I'm really excited for this one. Like, it gives me a reason, I think, to pick up kind of all of the Bat series, except for maybe Batwing, I still don't pick that up. I mean, I for me, it's like... The, the, the costume redesign and everything like that is just fantastic. Like, it looks really cool and it's very... Uh, it, does, it looks sharp for some of her yeah. like It makes sense. It looks more it looks more modern without being that spandex suity kind of thing. It's like, it, it actually looks like a young woman who is actually trying to be, you know, effective at crime fighting is taking, uh, like, the actual idea of what she wants to wear and considering it. Rather than Batman who, like, wears, like, the most crazy, like, battle suit armor because he knows what he's getting into. Batgirl can't do that because that's not what she's designed for. She's not designed to go head-to-head -head with every single opponent she ever meets. She has to be more stealthy about it, and the fact that her outfit is now more representative of what she really is as, like, as, as being part of the Bat family, like, it, for me, it's really exciting to see just that that change makes the whole story different. I don't really have any strong feelings. Honestly, I think that I like the uh, redesign. Uh, I, I'm super, super stoked about the clip-on cape. Oh, right. I don't know why. <laughs> like, that shouldn't be that big of like, an interesting point, but I'm all like, that's kind of snappy. <laughs> yeah. I like it. That's right. I did that. But honestly, I don't think it's still enough for me to pick up uh, that girl. Another thing about the costume I like is the fact that recently it has been more like purple, but this one seems to have a lot more purple in it than the norm. And I think that's a nice little throwback to like the original costumes. And it's also a nice little reminder that, oh yeah, there was Stephanie Brown in her, you know, like purple and black She's costume. She's coming back, you know. Yeah, well, really sad. they have to, you know, bring in new blood if they're gonna kill Bruce Wayne. And smeared on the walls too. Yeah. As apparently we've been building. In Metropolis. In Metropolis. <laughs> this is so wrong. Everything you guys just said. But no, I think yeah. the, well, the, the synopsis too, like, again, this is tying to the kind of things that Mark doesn't like. It involves Barbara moving to like a new school, trying to balance her school. It, basically, it's the plot line for uh, the new Batman Beyond with Terry trying to balance going to school. Okay. And it's basically that, but with Barbara Gordon okay. and a more fly costume. Before, the Bat family was Bruce, Alfred, Tim, Damien, Dick, and then occasionally Barbara, Katana. <laughs> That's actually about it. Isn't there a Batwoman title? Oh, wow, there's a Batwoman. But she has like nothing to do with the Yeah, Bat she's family. like an independent part of the family. Yeah, it's she... like... Mom and Dad have an argument, and Mom left and left Daddy with all the kids. I think it represents sort of a maturing for DC, and again also for the characters. Seeing more of them come into their own, seeing DC being willing to have new characters that can develop, and realizing that Batman doesn't, isn't always what makes Gotham great. Gotham itself is a great entity, it's a great city. Sometimes you can use Batman as the backdrop instead of using Gotham as a backdrop. All right, now we're gonna move over to the decidedly more exciting uh, announcements from Marvel. So we're gonna start off with the new Captain America. As it was re revealed the other day on the Colbert Report, uh, Sam Wilson, the Falcon, is going to be the new Captain America. Since Cap's super soldier from Swarm has like run out. Oh no, sorry, someone attacks him and 
the needles that he's attached with like draw out of the super soldier serum or something that sounds very comic booky. Yeah, because yes. yes. it's like he's been fighting with the super serum in his blood for ever, and not a single of enemy has thought, well, maybe I should just try to take it out. Acupuncture. That's <laughs> how we defeat Captain America. So, and you're right, it does feel very, like, for the sake of... Yeah, but... Like, it, but, that being said, I think it's a great, 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 great thing. Um, I think it's time for Steve to get a new identity. I think it's about time they gave Steve Rogers a chance to move on from the Captain America mantle and to give someone else a chance to fill it. Because there needs to be Captain America. I think in the Marvel Universe, because he's such an iconic character, it's like... As much as I don't like Superman, you need a Superman because of his, the, the icon he's established, you need Captain America in that same sense. Yeah, what they stand for is more important than who's behind the, the mask or who's behind uh, the costume or whatever. Or who, Specifically, what are, what are our feelings about Sam Wilson being... Oh, I'm fine with Sam Wilson being... The only thing that I was kind of confused about is, like, the picture they have is, like, the Falcon suit all, like, Captain america out and he has a shield. I'm like... Is he gonna keep the wings? <laughs> I hope he's gonna so. get in the way. No, like, I hope. And if he has that, why doesn't it just kind of like shield up? Like he doesn't need the shield as long as he has the shield symbol on. Why the wings. Wings. I, I, I think like, Captain America needs the shield. I would like to think that he can his, make a new one. He has wings. I would like to think that the shield is more like a representative in the image, so that you could see that he is Captain America. But I really hope bad. I really hope he. I truly hope he does ditch the shield. Um, he can't be Falcon and Captain America. That's a lot of work. He's not Falcon and Captain. He's Captain America. Then get rid of the wings. <laughs> well, you gotta bring a little something. With yeah. <laughs> I honestly like it because I mean it'll be a new Captain America. However, I feel like. Steve Rogers is gonna be Captain America again in maybe like two years. What I'm really hoping we'll see is Sam Wilson be Cap for a while, and then Steve Rogers either die or become the new director of Shield or something like that. And then they'll have either U.S. Patriot, the one who was on the Young Avengers for a while. Yeah, like, like maybe his name is just Patriot. Him or Miss America. I am so glad that Marvel is trying the trying to have the an African American as the main protagonist again. Like they're trying yeah. again because right. there was a guy who was he was now called the Patriot who was Captain America beforehand, but he had such bad reception at the time that they tossed it, and they just gave him his own heroism. And it was it was cool that they did that, but it's nice to see them try again, except with a more established hero. Right. Someone who's already in like the public's eye and is well-known enough that it could be more easily accepted rather than just some random guy thrown into the role and everyone's right. like, no, this yeah. is no good, and then Steve Rogers, Brad Bracken, and Frank. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes and how Sam Wilson handles being Captain America and how he deals with not being a super soldier, but trying to maintain that same, like, iconic look. That's another thing. Uh, they may try and introduce a super soldier serum to him. Like, that may be one of the major things that turns him into it. May not be, I don't know, I don't follow Captain America. I'm thinking they boring. I'm I actually agree with that. Like, I usually don't find Captain America very interesting. Like, I like movie Captain America, and I like certain arcs of Captain America. Brubaker's run, and really good stuff. I mean, Sam Wilson isn't as much of a soldier as, uh, yeah. what's his face, as Steve Rogers. <laughs> and so, you know, everything he does, he does it from a soldier's mindset. He does. Even Bucky, when he became Captain, you know, kind of held himself up to Steve's uh, responsibility, Steve's moral, stuff like that. And Sam will, of course, but it'll still be a new take, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And now. We are going to talk about Thor, new female Thor. Uh, the creative run on that is going to be Jason Aaron, who's already been on Thor, is going to be continuing on. But instead of uh, Isad Rubik, I believe is the current artist on Thor, Russell Dowderman, I believe is his name, is going to be taking over the artistic duties. And I saw uh, his art. It showed one of the previews of the new Thor in his art. It looks pretty good. What are our thoughts? Female Thor. Hell yes. Like that, like I, I love Thor. Thor was a great, it's a great one, especially the new one. But that was a great run. It's been like, fantastic. So he, far. I mean, he was. You know, Thor has always consistently been a really good hero. He was really cheesy early, right? But I mean, that's how they designed him. But as he got through, I mean, he definitely like he had all of his growing periods where he went through his entire life. You know, great hero brought down to being a mortal man. Great hero again brought up gods, all sorts of stuff. But it's gonna be. In my opinion, this is going to be amazing to see a female take up that godly role of Thor. Because, I mean, there's Lady, like, Lady Sif she's and stuff like that. And she's a baller, don't get me wrong. Like, she'll kill she'll she, your face. And it's great. It's cool that that is, but it's going to be... 
I don't know, for me it takes it to a new level that they're giving a female the role of Thor. Like, the God of Thunder, who has been in so many comics, who is on the Avengers, who has, like, done his own garbage for many, many years, and I'm just so excited I don't have good words for it. I just feel like it's so impressive from every front, because current Thor God of Run series has been fantastic. We're both reading it, it's yeah. amazing. Jason Aaron's done a great job with it. Thor, as represented in Uncanny Avengers, has been adding some interesting stuff to his uh, development as well. And if you look at the new solicits for Thor, um, they show female Thor, they show, uh, and then they show Thor, unworthy Thor, who's missing an arm and is carrying his old axe. And they set it up earlier in Uncanny Avengers where he uh, enchanted that axe actually so that it could kill gods. And that was a big no no. He used it to kill a celestial bad stuff. And so to see him wielding it again, it's like. They've literally set it up so that everything about this arc is interesting. Who is this woman? What makes her worthy? How did Thor lose his hammer? Why is Thor using this axe again? We still see Thor in the solicits for the upcoming Avengers series. So he's still part of the Avengers and being a hero, but he no longer is worthy of Mjolnir. And it's like, what, what leads up? Exactly, what leads up? What constitutes Thor still being a good man, but not quite being worthy of Mjolnir? And again, I just, the push Marvel has had to just introduce more female characters, more uh, women-driven titles. You know, uh, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, uh, Black Widow, Elektra, which is super awesome. Um, like, it's just it's super impressive. And anyone who argues, like, oh, you know, why a woman? It's like, why not a woman? What is his name? The horse-faced dude who made a rebuild. Kind of, Thor was a frog for a while, and he had, you know, there. Like... I, I think it's a, it's actually an otter concept that a woman hasn't had Mjolnir yet. And I am extremely interested to know who this woman is. I mean, like, they've said it's someone Thor has saved in the past, and I'm really excited to see her build a relationship with the Asgardians, with Loki, with the newly introduced Angela. Um, I don't know, it's just literally everything about it I think is a win. They've done a really good job of setting up a story that's going to be really influential and interesting on multiple fronts. Alright, I'm going to preface this saying... I agree with you, the whole, like, the good push that Marvel is having towards a lot of these female protagonists. I am so looking forward to Storm finally getting her own series. I'm waiting for it. Once it was announced, I... think it's I, out next week. <gasps> so, I've been waiting for it, like, just since it was announced. I'm just like, I need, I need this. Storm is awesome. I have that really bad gut feeling that... This Thor is going to be really awesome, that she's going to do a lot of cool stuff, but in a couple months, she's going to go the way of Beta Ray Bill. Like, she is going to be oh, side-seated by old Thor, and, like, there's going to be a whole, like, thing, and she's going to get her own weapon, maybe even have her own offshoot of Thor, but... She won't be Thor. I, I think she's not going to be Thor Thor anymore. No, she's definitely not going to be Thor. In Jason and Aaron's run, we see old Thor, who has Mjolnir again, and is the ruler of Asgard. Yeah, but I think ultimately, regardless of how the run turns out, whether or not she stays Thor, we're all very, very excited to see how the run goes, what the character's story is, and how it's all going to play out. Yeah. I want to see her hit someone with a hammer. Everyone wants to see Thor hit someone with a hammer. Alrighty, so that was uh, our Comics, Comics, etc. for today. Uh, if we miss anything that you're really interested about, let us know. We'll try to cover it on the next episode. If you want to give us your opinions on the things that we spoke about today, you should totally leave us comments, send us messages, let us know what you think. We're really interested. We think these are really big, exciting announcements coming out of Big 2. And we want to make sure that we know how you're reacting to them as well. I think we pretty much covered it. We're excited for Lady Thor. We're excited for everything that's coming out. I uh, didn't talk about it, but Deathstroke's coming out in October. Super excited about that. Moving on. Alrighty, remember who you are and what you are. Don't go causing any trouble out in that crazy world. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity, remorse. Fear, and it absolutely will not stop, ever, until you watch this video. And then there's the third one, where uh, his son got killed no. by Lucius Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's all like, Talk about ghosts.